Tell, tell us all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. Tell us all about the finer points of living in your traveling. Food, beer, history, nature, quest. Every corner of the song to the great Midwest. Tell us all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. We have the man that is going to be the, the big robot that everyone loves. <laughs> and that is John DiMaggio. Government has those numbers flipped. 
And so their model really works. And, and the transformations are so deep and so beautiful that I cannot help but you know try to help. And she's not taking this money home. She's taking it directly to Father Paul, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to, you can check it out, too, because I always post um, how much we've made at each convention. And then you can see it online, and I'll say, this is from the fans of Chattanooga Con. And that's what it'll say, and then you'll see, like, the total. So anyway, thank you in advance for, for that. It's a really great organization, man. You can do it. Oh, my God! I you got it. I took a picture of that. I'm going to take a picture, too, if you don't mind. That's really funny. You're like, I'll see you. You're like, here's my little finger, but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> no, I thought that you had to clarify it. You're just... So perfectly southern, you're like, I'm really far about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the time when you went into the tattoo parlor. Oh God! Well, I was. Uh, this is a couple of years ago. This thing, 15, 20 years ago, a long time ago, uh, in Hollywood. It was. <laughs> I was out with a couple friends of mine, and we, it was. It was. Uh, one in the morning. It was one in the morning. It was. I was, I was leaving the bar. I was walking past the tattoo parlor, and I wanted something to. to Compliment another tattoo just to face it up and to write on my wrist. And uh, so I, I went in and I was just like, hey, can I get this? And this and this. Yeah, yeah, sure. And they start doing it. And I'm just, you know, it's a quick tattoo. And I was looking on the wall and there's all sorts of Simpson stuff. And I was like, oh, God. And I say to the guy, I say, hey, man, has anybody ever come here and get Futurama tattoos? You know, just, just out of curiosity. And he's just like, yeah, this guy right here is getting a bender on his neck right now. <laughs> I was like, whoa, are you serious? And so I introduced myself to the guy, um, and he was from Australia, and <laughs> he was in the United States just on a walkabout. You know, a lot of people from down under, from New Zealand and from Australia, they'll just go on a trip, like they'll finish school and then they'll be like, okay, for the summer I'm going somewhere, or they'll go for six months, they'll take time up, and they'll just go anywhere in the world and just hang out. And he was he was doing just that. And so I signed his neck, and then he got a tattooed on his neck. Oh. And then, and then since then, we're like Facebook friends, and like whenever I go to Australia for a convention, I go and hang out with him, but we have a whole, a whole lot of fun. So it's just like, yeah, really crazy. Like, that, oh man, tattoos. Like, I couldn't believe how, I, I, was, I was in shock. But he didn't like, believe you at first. No, he didn't. And I had to like prove to him. I had to be like, bye bye, get me right now, come on. <laughs> I was like, how random is that? He was just like, okay, I don't need it. Because, you know, thank God we had Google at the time for crying out loud. See <laughs> Google. Hi. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm a huge fan. Um, so you guys have been a few trauma for a very long time, yes. obviously. And my question was, what were some of the differences you noticed kind of between each run? Like, were they similar, or did you notice anything yeah. that felt kind That's of different? That's a good different? question. They were different amounts of time. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, nothing's changed. It's always been pretty much the same. We just went back to work. Yeah, we just, it's like riding a bike. Yeah, really. It's like yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody it's, loves. It's familial. It's uh, we all kind of we all kind of know the rhythm of, 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 of the show, and we get right back into it. Um, at least, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah absolutely. Yeah. The old show. We can't talk about the new show. It's more strict. Yes. Hey, Brad, did you ever get a feeling you was going out with girls because you're spoused to them? When he's watching his hands start to disappear. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, if he doesn't have children because he's he. I love that. That was so funny. Another uh, great vendor line is uh, he's walking up the side of the building with Fry, and he's walking past the window, and, and uh, he goes, I get a room, you tell him! And then, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna lose some weight. <laughs> That's so hard. So terrible. The writers, so funny. The writers uh, just, they're, they're so amazing. And you know, every time I try to tell one of those guys how in what high esteem I hold them, even Matt, if I start to go, Matt, you know, God, 
and, and I, it comes out as gibberish because of my adulation. Yeah, for them. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then well, I have two kids, and so they, they grew up watching the show too, so we have little phrases that we always use, like, oh no, is everyone? Like, every time I hear something. Or if my kids will ask for something super expensive, I'll go, what's rent? <laughs> <laughs> It's, a, it's a voice exercise. You know, the main thing that you have to be concerned about, I think, in my opinion, when you're doing vocal stuff, voice work, um, is you, you really have to support it with breath. Um, and, that, and, and that really opens up everything. It opens up your diaphragm so that you can project and you can, and you're, you know, like literally sometimes I'll do stuff and some of the stuff I'll do, like I'll start to, I'll start to get like hiccups in the middle of stuff because because my diaphragm's like, hey man, this is, you're cold, dude. You gotta warm this up. So, <clears throat> so, so, really support your voice with a lot of breath, um, and uh, the tongue exercises. That sounds weird. Your tongue, your tongue, and your face. There's so many muscles all over the place, and if you can loosen up your face and your your throat and your neck, literally. Stretching it, be like really, like, and, and it looks ridiculous, but it it works because everything warms up, everything warms up, and then you can, and then you have the ability to do these things that you know that you you're kind of cold cold about before. You, it, it helps you, um, but your tongue, you know, back and forth, you know, uh, horizontally, uh, diagonally, you know, uh, uh, vertically in your mouth, like you know, to touch touch your tongue to where your gum meets your teeth. And where you go meet your teeth. I didn't know this. That'll help you when you you know, that, that kind of stuff. So it, it, it's there's all kinds of physical things that you can do. And, and, also, and, and Billy gave me the best advice ever. If you ever have to do something where you're using your voice for a long period of time, I still remember I did my first like video game. And Billy told me how to not lose my voice doing that. You said, you said, take breaks every 10 minutes and drink some tea. And like give your voice. That's profound. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> Uh, tea, 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 with yeah. lemon, tea with lemon, the, the outline is good. Yeah, but you know sometimes your, your attitude can rise to the occasion of where you want to go with your voices. Like I was going to suggest, and this is for anybody, you know, not just people who want to do voices, but the minute you forget how to play like a child, that's the day you get old. It's, it's like you start breaking down because we, we play like children, you know, that's what acting kind of is. And it's perfect because um, there's so much junk going on in the world and I, and I, I love going to work and I don't want to leave. I swear, the last session I did was the other day, at, uh, some filling stuff. I didn't, want, I didn't want to leave because I just, I was looking at Carlos, yeah. David, the way he directs us, me, and everything was making me so happy because the willingness to play like children that's your job. I also wanted to share our, our friend Dee Bradley Baker. Um, yes. Created this website. Yeah, this website is unbelievable. Um, anything you could possibly want to know about breaking into the business is called I Wanna Be a Voice Actor dot com. Yeah. It's free. You can just anyone can check you, it out. If you Google Dee Bradley Baker, it, I Want to Be a Voice Actor dot com comes up. Yeah, it will help you. And and and, and he is. He's so knowledgeable, and it's and it's the tone is with such patience that I don't have. You like, well, just go out of the water. Stop swinging! I don't know what to do. Uh, Rocks in your head. Yeah, <laughs> but but his is just yeah. patient, and it's I mean, it just it's a wonderful, wonderful. And they also uh, feel like when I had like someone say to me, "Well, I want to be a voice actor, but I don't want to have to be an actor." And that doesn't like, work. Yeah, you're done. Break you, yeah, you're, it's, it's, really it's done. It's not about doing a voice all the time. It's oh, about voice not doing like icing. Yeah, yeah. 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 you have to be able to work through what's going on. And act on the text and the subtext and have a clear understanding of it. And then maybe you're free to, to create a voice or a character because you've got the other stuff down. 
Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, and he was just like, are you sure you want me to do this? Like, and I'm like, just trust me, just go ahead and do it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what the show was about. You even told me, someone said, people go, hey, John, what's the show about? And you'd be like, no, I have no idea. <laughs> if you ask me about the plots of any Adventure Time show, I'm just like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have to myself. No, it's so crazy. It's so yeah, awesome. Crazy. But I've had, the, I've had the luxury of having that. So I, I'd say that. I'd say that Victor, Homer, Homer and Jake are pretty. That's a that's pretty awesome. So I just think that's my answer. But you, I think it might be fun for Inez Wong to meet men from King of the Hill because it would be sort of rude to each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm trying to think. I, I can't. I don't know. I have tunnel vision when it comes to this stuff. I never, I never thought about mashups too much. But some lady came up to me. She might be here, and she had a request. She wanted to do a recording, and she's giving me stage directions. And I said, "Oh, so you're like a filmmaker?" And uh, she said, "If, if Bugs Money and Zoidberg and Elmer Fudd, you know, did it, and she said, but all improv." <laughs> My version of improv is never do anything the same way once. <laughs> yeah. You know, just go off. Sure. Do whatever you want, and, and it works. I know. I like hearing you say that. All right, very well. <laughs> uh, that was basically uh, my tribute to Harvey Corman. Uh, the wonderful character actor who was on the Carol, Carol Burnett show yeah. for many, many years. And uh, he, but he also was in Blazing Saddles. Yeah. As, uh, as, as Hedley, Hedley Lamar. And so basically, Dr. Dragon came from him, naturally. Shut up, you! You know, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's totally, totally where that came from. That's, that's a Harvey Corman. Rip off, like apparently, you know, like <laughs> it was somebody who was. A, I heard this great story about an interaction with Harvey Corman. It wasn't me, but it was someone that went up to Harvey Corman and they were just like, I came up to him and we were like, Mr. Corman, I just wanted to tell you that I I am your biggest fan. And Harvey Corman looked at him and went, No. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. Thank you guys for your generosity. Yeah, look at that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 